think it's really interesting to see how the industry's evolved from uh, the success of iPlayer online uh, to the success of ITV Player Online to the point where we are now about connected devices and connecting TVs in the living room. Now this is very much a space where we can converge the two of, of web and the living room space together and this is a really exciting proposition for the audience here today from application developers through to content creators to see how they can ultimately access these platforms and, and monetize their content through these as well. Um, <coughs> First of all, um, a, a brief comment on what's going to happen this evening. We're going to have a little glimpse into the future. Um, and one of the troubles with technology is that you can't always tell um, until it's happened um, not only which technology is going to be successful, but how the rest of us um, are going to use it. Um, nevertheless, uh, our panel tonight are going to be attempting to do that, um, that almost impossible thing. I represent Future Media and Technology. And so along with the big brands that you see in front of you, the really key thing is that we're meet, moving 320 technical people to Salford. And of the people we're moving, we're moving the people who are supporting the output coming out of Salford on web, mobile and TV platforms. Uh, but we're also moving to Salford some really core key platforms of mobile and TV platforms. So that's the existing red button services and IPTV services. And the reason we want to move those to Salford is we really want Salford to be a centre of excellence for those platforms. Now, that's all happening in, starting in May, so the building's open in May, but actually we currently have quite a sizeable team already in Manchester. We're recruiting into Manchester at the moment. And so um, Nick, sat at the table there, <coughs> is leading the team in Manchester. So the news is that we're all already really here and there's a lot going on. So the opportunity we have is that we can start thinking about one technology platform that can drive all these different devices. They can start being connected. And so whilst we talk about IPTV maybe today, what we need to be thinking about is multi-device. When people are watching TV at the moment, 40% of them apparently are multitasking on their mobile phones. They're currently using Facebook and Twitter, but what we would love them to be doing is actually doing things that complement the linear broadcast. So linear broadcast absolutely isn't dead, but what we think that we need to do is to keep the audience engaged and is to add things that are complementary to the linear broadcast. So there's two main things that drive the BBC in this direction. So one very, very big thing to us is the Digital Olympics. So for the first time, we want to say that we have covered absolutely every second of the Olympics and that you can get the content wherever you want, whenever you want. So imagine you're watching, this is all based on the last Olympics, and you've got Usain Bolt um, for the, uh, getting ready for the Olympics, uh, I think it's 100 metres men's final. Um, this is, imagine this is live television still coming to you either via your satellite or uh, your digital terrestrial signal. And in a, a world where your set-top boxes can then be, have an internet cable plugged in the back of them, you can then launch a BBC service. So in this case, um, you can imagine that this is now a, a sort of a, a glorified EPG, which is offering you lots more, which is being delivered to your TV through an IP connection. Uh, you can watch. In this case, we're going to launch applications. That they're in, a, in a world which doesn't have any rules, you can imagine that there might be all sorts of applications. Obviously, that's something which is being uh, worked out now. Don't read anything into the designs, etc. But the idea here is that you could have a, a, a stream of new features all delivered to you via IP connection. You could have classic Olympic footage from the archives. Uh, notionally, uh, there's an idea of you having your own stream of information, stuff that you've uh, stored or you've uh, booked. And again, in a world where everything is delivered by IP, Potentially, you could have other sources also feeding into that, like uh, the, a Twitter feed. If you look at what we call over-the-top content, so that's content not just coming from your pay TV provider, but coming via the broadband path through to your set-top box and onto the TV. Viewers of, of over-the-top content where they had uh, a virgin subscription were choosing to watch 63% of that catch-up TV through their TV and only 22% online. 
What we've seen is the BBC's view of how uh, over the top connected TV experience may look like. 4OD. Yeah, 4OD. So that was our first video on demand platform that we built. And there's a lot of content producers and things in here, actually people who make content, right? Content is king. If you've got good content, you can make money online, okay? When we first basically came across 4OD, and 4OD wanted to put an online proposition together, they didn't know how to make money out of their content, okay? So they said, right, what we'll do, we're a commercial broadcaster, we'll do a bit of public money. What we'll do, we'll basically have ad-funded content, we'll have a registration model, we'll do subscription, and we'll do pay as well. And they tried all these models. So 4D tried all these models together with download. As you're probably aware, you can do rental and you can do download as well. And they tried all these different models. And so they realized that basically everybody wanted to watch stuff for free. How many people use YouTube? Is it free now? Is it free? Ah, yeah, it's ad funding, isn't it? Yeah, so they're getting revenue to drive their platform through ad funding. Okay. Sorry? They're Google, they're huge. They can afford to. <laughs> right? So basically, 4OD changed their model. And if you look at the most, of, most of the VOD models on the, on, the, um, on the platforms today, apart from the likes of um, Skyplay, who's a subscription, subscription model, most of them is basically 80% ad funded, 10% pay, and 10% subscription. Okay, so that's basically the models they all use. Even some of the broadcasters like ITV, who are fundamentally commercial broadcasters with, who have lots and lots of advertising, they're going to probably start introducing some sort of other model, I can't tell you what it is, but some other model to generate revenue. Okay? Other ways that they're generating revenue as well is by what we basically talk about extending their reach. Yeah? So 4OD at the moment is basically pinned to the PC, pinned to the Mac. But before Christmas, you're going to see it being launched on other devices. Okay? Those <coughs> devices being, well, primarily, I can probably tell this, it's in the public arena, games consoles. So the interesting thing is here, is I've basically got Sky Player on my, on my phone here. I can't wait, it won't play from a video perspective. Nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. I've just basically taken the website and just basically run it up into the browser, which is basically an, an IE browser. And once again, it's got content up there, but it's a very quite simple interface. So you could almost, almost run it on a mobile phone, but it's still a bit tweaky and twiddly and all that kind of stuff. Now basically Sky, Sky themselves, very, very aggressive into the marketplace, getting themselves onto multiple devices. They're on Xbox, they're on Fetch TV. Um, and they're also on iPhone as well. Okay. Now the content they put onto iPhone, they don't really protect because of the problems of protecting content on the iPhone. So, in my other bag of tricks I've got here, I've got an iPhone. So, what I'll do on this one is I will put up a Sky Player application, providing it connects, of course. Can't really see that, can you, very well? So that's a Sky Player application that's been written specifically for the iPhone. It's not running in a browser, but it's been written specifically for the iPhone, with the gestures, taking all the, the gestures they actually use on an iPhone. Okay? This is a free application you can download on your own, on your own um, iPhones. Now what I'm going to try and do is see if we can actually get live TV playing on this. Let's see if it will play. I can't put it upside down. So this is coming over 3G, so it's coming over the telephone network. That's not bad, is it? Let's get those bars out of the way. So there we go. That's live Sky Television coming over the wire, not the wire, coming over the air onto an iPhone. And you still have to watch the Royal Wedding. And we'll still have to watch the Royal Wedding. We'll probably have to watch so, it for the so next that, that three years yeah. on Catch Up TV. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an application they specifically built, built for iPhone. Although most, most companies coming to us today, and uh, that includes people on ITV Channel 4, uh, people that um, are dealing with Pace as well, Viasat, 
coming to us and saying, we want to get on multiple devices, and we want to be able to put all our content onto multiple devices. And one of the strangest questions that we always get asked is, which DRM technology should we use? And we say, well, it's not our choice. It depends on your content and your studios, because they always make the choice. So you always find a subset of, techno of content on mobile devices, because the studios haven't given the rights to have those on there. We won't recommend a DRM technology. That's up to the content providers to actually do that. Other things we have as well, we want to build one application and we want to deploy on every single mobile device, connected TV that's out there. Do you think that's possible? Well, no, it's not. As I kind of highlighted already, you've got different screen resolutions, you've got different gestures, you've got different image sizes. You've got different technologies to protect the actual video. Well, listen, thank you all very much indeed. Um, thanks to um, the, uh, the panel. Um, it is um, a new world, I suspect, um, whether any of us in this room um, make any money out of it um, remains to be seen. Uh, maybe, Mike, you could arrange another one of these in uh, five years' time to see, um, uh, uh, to see who has. And I, I guess who's ever um, uh, made the money out of it can pay for it. Thank you very much indeed.